What's happening guys? I am going to put a new edge on my SOCOM Elite here. This one is in a turquoise color. It is 204P steel. Right now it's got a few little nicks in it. Not real bad, but they are there and I can feel it when I cut. I'm going to keep the original angle. I'm not going to change anything. Uh, ordinarily Microtech sharpens these around 25 degrees per side pretty steep angle but they do ground them really thin so it's not it's not really detrimental to the knife. I'm going to start out with my Shapton Pro 120 and then I'm going to move on to the Bernal Cutlery 1K 4K combo stone. Not real sure how to pronounce the name but it'll be in the title as well as the description should you care to check one out. The 1K really reminds me of the Nubatama Ume 1K. Same same kind of speckled pattern really close to the same kind of feel. It's got that scratchy feeling. Seems to be a little coarser than most 1Ks. Got a Mejuro uh, stone here in case my stone gets loaded up. I'll be able to use it to clean it off. Other than that, I'm pretty much ready to go. Get a little water on here. And since I am keeping the same angle, this should go really quickly. I got some new strops with some new compound in recently from Stroppy Stuff. I have a link to his IG down in the comment section. They are diamond sprays. And I've had kind of a hit or miss... Uh, result with them. Seems if I just use one grip by itself, for example, if I just use a one micron, I can't get a decent edge. But if I use the one micron paired with the 0.5 micron, it turns out pretty good. However, if I just use one single grit, I just can't seem to make them work for me. Not sure what's going on with it. Diamonds, diamonds and me never really got along, so I keep I keep blaming it on the diamond, just the fact that it's a diamond stone or diamond uh, stropping material. Uh, I'm not real sure what I'm doing incorrectly. Maybe when you guys watch it, you can tell me. See me going over angle or something. What I'm doing here is I'm putting pressure directly over the spot I need to grind. I've got a burr slightly from about midways up to the tip, but this back half I still don't have a burr developed. So I'm just putting pressure right on the edge and my finger is kind of gliding along the stone. To get the tip area, I'm sure you guys have heard me describe this, but for those of you who haven't, I've got a burr across the whole edge now. To get to the tip though, I ride my finger along like this, and when I feel my finger dragging across the stone, I can feel when that tip is actually making contact. I know not to go over that point once I've reached it. That allows me to get all the way from the base to the tip. But I've got a healthy burr all the way up the knife. Just going to do a few more strokes just to kind of even things out. This 127 is very aggressive so I don't want to I don't want to eat too much material away. I'm going to start on the other side. Do the same thing. Check my scratches, make sure I'm grinding where I need to be.
and I got a burr all the way up that side. So I'm pretty much done with the 120 stone. Next up, I'm going to use the Bernal Cutlery 1K 4K stone. This is a soaker. Had it in water for about 10 minutes, maybe five, just while I got everything prepped to make the video. It's holding it very well. So I've got a burr on this side of the knife. That's the side I'm going to start on. Get that burr removed. Get the scratch pattern switched over to the 1K scratches. had someone comment on my video recently about the time it takes to sharpen a knife and how they can do it in 15 seconds. <laughs> I can sharpen a knife quickly if I want to, but I also want my bevels to look good. I want them to be even. I want to try to remove as many of the scratches as I possibly can without removing too much material. I mean, there's more to it than just getting the knife sharp. Now, if I have a work knife, I'm out in the field, and I'm looking to do just that, get an edge back on the knife. Sure, I can do it in 15 seconds. Just take that 1K stone, scrub the knife back and forth till I develop a burr, and then cut the burr off and I'm good to go. It's not what we're doing here though. I'm trying to make it pretty, trying to make it even, trying to make it as sharp as possible while looking good. I've got a burr. Just doing a few very light strokes to kind of even it out again and switching sides. For the tip on this side, I'm doing the same thing, letting my finger right along the tip until I feel it gliding, my finger actually gliding across the stone and I can feel the tip just underneath it. I know I'm getting all the way to the very tippity tip. That lets me know I'm grinding where I need to be, I don't need to go over, and as long as I do it right, I should keep everything nice and even. Now I've got the burr flipped, I'm going to do a few Minimizing passes. I want to try to break some of this off and cut some of it off Because I did start out with that 120 burr And we've now replaced it with pretty much a 1000 grit burr So now I'd like to try to cut some of it off if possible I don't fill it, but I'm sure there's still some there. But I'm going to call that good enough. We're going to switch over to the 4K. This 4K is a little odd. It does soak up a little water, so I do recommend putting it under running water for a minute or so. If not, just let it soak with your 1K for just a few. I wouldn't let it soak too long, though, just because really high grit stones have a tendency to crack. I don't know if this one does, but better to be safe than sorry. There's no sense in like perma soaking it. Just let it get a, a little water absorption and take it out. You can soak the 1K by itself just by filling up the water just so that the 1K edge is all this, this underwater. This doesn't leave a super high polish. It's more of a Kasumi like finish, kind of hazy. I'm not really looking for a super high polish though. All I'm really after right, right now is just some refinement. Make sure I get some of that burr removed and anything that's left. I'll be able to remove with the straps.
Hopefully that background noise isn't too distracting. I've got my door open here to give me a little outside lighting. It's one of the biggest issues you have if you ever shoot video is lighting. I'm just trying to brighten things up so you guys can see what's going on here. And I am almost done. I'll do a few more, a few more passes. And we will get stroppy stuff's diamond strops out. Let's see what kind of damage I can do. Not sure how well this is going to show up, but I will try to get a shot of the bevel before I strop. These are the strops, stroppy stuff made for me. Like I said, I'll have his information down in the description. Now this strop I've got loaded with 4 micron, 1 micron. The other strop is 0.5 and 0.25. I'm not going to bother with the 4 micron. That's just too aggressive for what I'm doing here. I'm going to start on 1 micron. I'm going to test the edge. Then we're going to go through the other two grits. Now he says these diamonds are very aggressive and do not take very many passes to achieve the results you're looking for. I'm not sure exactly how many passes would be recommended. I'm gonna start with about five or six and see where we're at. Pretty good. Of course, I'd get a phone call right in the middle of this. So the edge is decent. Still not quite as nice as I would like it. Just do a few more passes here. This is still one micron. That's better. Well, I'll say that. <laughs> you try another piece of paper. By the way, if you guys have never checked out this channel on YouTube, give it a look. If you're into 18th century role playing, cooking, just the history. American Settlers. It's a fun channel to watch. It's doing S cuts, S cuts but it's pretty difficult. And this is a pretty broad, broad blade, so I can blame that. I do know the edge can be better, so we're going to go to 0.5 micron diamond. Keeping the exact same angle I had when I sharpened. I'm not changing anything around, I'm not going over, I'm not going under. Not sure how many passes that was. I 
S cuts are getting better. You can do them in smaller, tighter radiuses. And we're going to go to the final grit, which is 0.25. I really like his strops. I just wish they were a little bit long, longer. Pretty compact, kind of tight, especially for a big blade like this. I'd rather have something where I could start down here and do a full sweep. They do get the job done, however. Just wish they were a little bit bigger. I'm not sure if he offers different sizes. He sent these just for me to test out and try, see what I thought about them. I really like the material. The diamond compounds, on the other hand, like I said, I've been hit or miss. I could do without them personally. They have shown me nothing that I can't get from white compound. Kind of focusing on that tip. I seen a little spot where I had some haziness. And I'll probably have to take that back to the stone to get that out. The bevel did polish up much better. Not real sure how this is going to pick up, but I'll bring you guys down closer so we get a final shot of it. Just suffering a little bit, I think. Let me get another piece of paper. I should have stopped at the half micron. Yeah. It's not, it's not as keen as it was. I don't know if I shaved the apex off going over angle or what, but it's not as sharp as it was when I was on the 0.5. Now if I took the time, just dropped it a few more times on the 0.5, I could probably bring it right back up, but I don't want to lose what little aggression is left, so I'm going to leave it right here. I may go back and hit it on some white compound just to say I did that, recheck the edge, Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and do that and see what I get. All right, guys, last go, I promise. This is my DLT XL Strop White Compound. It polishes a little better. Definitely cuts smoother. I don't know if you can hear the difference or see it. And get those tight, tight radius dust curves again. it there guys if you see in the video something maybe I was doing incorrectly as far as my angle please let me know I don't think I am but you never know video sense to 
tends to show you things you miss while you're doing it. Uh, it's actually a very good tool if you're learning how to sharpen to check for your own mistakes. Not going to bother with the best seed cutting test. I don't really care what this is at. I'm just wanting to get it sharp, get those little nicks out. I've accomplished that. Kept the same angle. The bevel looks nice and bright against the black coating. So we're going to call this good. Bring you guys down real quick, show you this, and uh, we'll call this done. Like I said, I, I really like Stroppy Stuff's Strops. Just not super excited about the stropping compound. Now, if any of you guys have used it and have better results, please post it below. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm doing incorrectly. Diamonds just don't seem to agree with me. I get much better results with CBN, and I get even better results with white compound. Perhaps it's because I've been using it for so long. I, I don't know. Whatever the case, I'm not very proficient with diamond. Give you guys a look at his strops. They're well made. Nice hard leather. It's not spongy. Double sided. They're just a little smaller than I like. If they had at least four more inches on them, I'd be all about them. Um, as is, I mean, if you want a travel strop, these are perfect. They're small enough to carry with you, even in a back pocket, if that were your thing. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Y'all have a good one.